My interest in earth mysteries really began uh, by studying the crop circles. Uh, I became intrigued by that when I was quite a bit younger. I had a sort of a experience, kind of dream type situation with, with alien abduction kind of thing in Cambridge, and it kind of uh, really kind of triggered a lot of uh, research for me about what was going on. It terrified me actually. And um, my brother Emmanuel, he kind of eventually bought me this book about crop circles and the link. And this also had the stuff about earth energies in it. And, you know, the Son of the Serpent, the Michael and Mary lines, mm -hmm. and opened up a whole new doorway of, of research for me. And um, we started to go and look at some crop circles, we were completely mystified and uh, flabbergasted by them, and got completely, uh, kind of became slightly obsessed by it. <laughs> and we started researching it, and uh, and then I read The Son of the Serpent, and that was the key, really, to unlocking it, really, because I never looked at history before with any kind of understanding and uh, read the sun and the serpent it completely opened me up to the true nature of history and like, the ancient sort of, um, sort of societies of Britain and the world really and um, and that just led to the whole megalithic kind of interest and in going to visit the sites learning dowsing and exploring this whole phenomena it's really the earth energies that, that I kind of stuck with over the years I don't know why it's not particularly um, I don't know there's no reason for it that I can logically work out but the Mary line goes through Wandleberry, which I kind of grew up near, uh, near Cherry Hinton in Cambridge. And um, it really did open, you know, realising I'd been going there all these years to this site. And, um, and suddenly this line was there. I started researching Wandleberry and finding loads of stuff out, realising it was a prehistoric place rather than um, rather than just an Iron Age hill fort, which, which is often um, which the archaeologists and local historians tell us it is. Mm -hmm. So it really went from there. Then. Um, Eventually I moved to Glastonbury and that's where I met the guys, uh, David Hatfield who organises Avalon Rising and joined up with him and a few others and really started getting into it really quite quickly and I was developed into a real passion and started doing talks about it and mm -hmm. things like that. So just, um, just natural natural progression, it's kind of like I found my calling really. Right, yes, because you, you planned reason you plan to study and map the entire planetary career in a 10-year project. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, is that not a plan anymore? <laughs> yeah, it was a plan to, um, it is a plan really, to map the planetary grid somehow, but um, uh, what I, the way I'm going to really do it is just through, uh, cause I research many different things at once, so you can, as I go to different places I kind of research it while I'm there. Yeah. Um, but, uh, my current research is what, what the talk was about earlier today. Um, about how these energies were harnessed and manipulated around the world for um, mm -hmm. to enhance seed production and, and like agriculture and, and fertility in the lo local area, which I think is you know one of the key pragmatic kind of tools mm -hmm. that the ancient man had to use, and which possibly might come in handy again in the near future. Just trying to get back into like a traditional way of living and working with the earth, working with the energies, and just working on a more subtle realm where dowsing is involved, where we have to kind of locate the water, test the energies and mm. find out how we can work with them. Because I think, you know, everything's provided for us on Earth. There's nothing we can't get from nature. That, you know, we, everything is available. We just have to, have to tap into it. This is the, the research, you know, when you look at the, the Great Pyramid, I mean, that's what they were doing there. They were tapping into the Earth to generate energy somehow. Mm. Um, this has been proven by engineers now. This is kind of how, how, it, was, how it was used. The same thing can be said all around the world. And you find all these correlations around the world. I've noticed personally mm -hmm. through travelling that, that link this all up, all this similar symbolism of the serpents, double spirals, um, very similar legends and myths, and mm -hmm. and, um, and you can really find the same phenomena all over the planet. Yeah, I think it's interesting what you're saying about the um, how you think it's going to be important for us to learn how to douse for water and all that because the uh, Native American Indian, I think it's the Hopi prophecies, you know, they talk about how it's really important that now we should start to learn how to grow our own food, you know, in a, on a small scale, you know, sort of small farming communities. Yeah. You know, but, because of... Sorry. That's okay. No, no, but um, growing our own food, mm. knowing where your water supply is, knowing how to make sure your seeds will last the winter, um, tending to the soil, making it so it's going to be vibrant and it's going to be fertile for growing. Mm. These are just 
basic qualities of uh, you know simple farming agricultural lifestyle if, unless we you know go back to being hunter gatherers which I doubt we will um, I think um, that this kind of this kind of knowledge has, is coming forth again now through Edmund Marriage and his research and the O'Brien's research um, you look at the Stone Age farming um, in Alana Moore who's doing some research in Australia on this and done, done loads of tests then you've got the John Burke and the BLT research team who discovered all this information through crop circle research, which is completely, you know, completely, you know, it's a very unusual way to find out about knowledge about the ancient sites is through the crop circles. But then you look at the crop circles and you realise they're all on the energy lines, they're all near the sacred sites. There's all these clues, and um, you know, and and that, that alone is a big enough mystery to warrant a pr proper exploration of it. So I think you know, with the crop circles as well, it's showing us um, to get back out into the nature, to get back out into like into the farming, you know, mm -hmm. growing our own stuff. It's giving us little clues, you yeah, know. Do you, and think, do you think maybe it's because it's going to be a necessity? <laughs> Will it be a necessity? I if, mean, uh, you yeah. know, because of the prophecies and 2012, and supposedly what might happen. If yeah, I mean, I, um, what's your views on that? <laughs> Well, yeah, many prophecies do suggest that we are heading for a big change, you know, in the, in the coming few years, 2012 and all that. Um, and I think we do have to take a look at that with a very respectful eye and, and just, you know, take that on board because, uh, you know, the indigenous tribes who are currently telling us, you know, sharing knowledge with us are telling us to get back to nature. And I think... Um, Naturally, a lot of us who want to are getting back into that way of life and wanting that good life as such. You know, getting back to growing our own food. But really, it is going to is going to become an essential tool. And I, I think it's just getting back to basics in a way. It's not even like anything great and mystical or anything. It's just like let's get. I want to know how to grow food. I want to know where my water is. I want to know I'm going to survive and all my seeds are going to survive. I want to know. You know, just learning basic tools of you know living and survival. And I think. And that's going to come into play over the generations. You know, again, it's like a cycle repeating itself, really. Yeah, well, it's also about living in harmony, isn't it, mm. with the earth? And yeah, living so. in harmony. Yeah, it, is, it, is, it does come down to that, really. Mm. Yeah, we really do have to get back to that kind of. Um, it's just the simple ways, really. Mm. I think you know, you know, when you haven't got supermarkets, you haven't got all this complicated machinery. You kind of, mm. you know, it's good just to tend to your local area. I study nutrition. Have studied nutrition got qualified at Diploma in Nutrition and I kind of I run a nutrition business and so I'm very and I've been look I've, I've studied the minerals and I've studied probiotics and microbes in the soil and this kind of thing anyway so I find this all very interesting um, and I've also my other big interest is obviously the megalithic you know sciences and, and the earth energies and the earth mysteries and my latest research they've all come together so I'm quite pleased in a way because two of my favorite subjects blended together into this new project and um, and yeah, I organised the uh, Megalithomania conference in Glastonbury with John John Martineau and Gareth Mills. They helped me do it, and they founded it. Kind of, we founded it together a couple of years ago, which is um, in 2008. It's on May the 17th and 18th at the Assembly Rooms. Um, and we've got invited speakers from all over the world to kind of focus on all these these megalithic sciences and geomancy. Um, oh, I'm a co-editor of the Avalon Rising magazine. Uh, with Sean Kerwin, who's a sort of professional geomancer, and David Hatfield's involved, the founder of it, and uh, we're developing it into a magazine called Albion Rising, where we want to create an Earth Mysteries magazine, again, a bit like the Lay Hunter used to, uh, who Paul Devereaux and used to edit, and Danny Sullivan, uh, because they feel there's, there's just missing, really, and, you know, we need someone we can all pool our information and resources and share our knowledge, and um, so we're developing that as an idea, but we're looking for funding and kind of sort of if we can somehow get um, someone to support us with it. Anyone out there, please, yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, we, we want to get everyone involved in it. We're not kind of trying to be exclusive or anything, We're just, you know, creating a, a new sort of project. Um, yeah, what else am I doing? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm involved in certain festivals, Big Green Gathering, We, all, me and Sean, and a guy called Martin, organise the Earth Energies Divinatory Arts Area at Big Green Gathering. We do Avalon Rising spaces at Sunrise Celebration and various other. We work with the Antiquarian Society in Sussex. Uh, we worked it out of the Ordinary, uh, which is a fantastic festival, which is also on its website, I believe. And um, 
Yeah, we, and uh, Avalon Rising and the Antiquarius site, we kind of work as a team now. We're going to be planning to travel to places around the world and do tours and mm. take people with us and write books about, um, you know, we're going to do combined books with you know, articles in it and things like that. So we've got quite a lot on the go. Mm. And, uh, and the, the other thing that's really interesting me is that the Loxodrome line, which I think you've been talking about with Edmund and Joy O'Brien and Carolyn, and um, I've been studying that independently, been meeting up with Joy to kind of research it. I want to do, I'm going to do a write-up about that because um, I feel it's important knowledge that to have these megalithic stones and this alignment through East Anglia. Mm. It's quite amazing, really, and it starts at Wandlebury, so coming back to my home. Yeah, I'm currently writing uh, a book for Wooden Books, John Martineau's um, publishing company, called The Earth Grids. And we're going to be looking at, well, I'm going to be writing about all the different theories about the Earth Grid and how the, what type of energy it is, the geometry associated with it. Lots of ideas from Bruce Cathy and about how UFO flight paths are connected with it. And we're going to go a bit, we're going to go quite sort of funky with it, I think, and just sort of play around with it a bit and just to see what we come up with. And... Um, I've been researching the Earth Grid for some years now, and uh, it's kind of culminated in this small book. And uh, and this is something that the psychic children were very interested in. That's kind of what stimulated my interest in it, really. And there seems to be lots of correlations with the nature of um, spherical geometry and mathematics, and how how the, what the Earth and how the Earth Grid is mathematically placed around the Earth. And this new research I've just just been doing today, in fact, in the last few days, is, is the whole thing about the Great Pyramid and how that seems to have been a kind of machine motor to, to create as an energy sort of generator. And that is actually the pinpoint centre of the grid as well, so I'm wondering if there's a connection there, and if, like Tesla, Nikola Tesla once did, he could create a global energy system, almost did it, you know, he just didn't quite get the funding, I think, to finish it off, or he got suppressed. But the ancients might have been doing that, and had a free energy source of electricity, and um, radiation, and radio waves, and, you know, so there's a possibility that it was there was an energetic component associated with it, and it was designed and, and harnessed um, for several different purposes. But <coughs> at the moment, this is pure speculation. Mm -hmm. But the Earth Grid book's going to really have a look at all the different subjects associated with it, from ancient metrology, which is like John Neal's research, to um, how the sacred sites, how they're harmonically placed around the Earth, um, how the sites seem to encode. <coughs> their own longitude and latitude within them, which is archaeocryptography, uh, the work of Karl Monk, and uh, and also a lot about you know how ley lines are associated with it. The magnetic field seems to be a definite, definite sort of part of it. I just give a whole overview because a lot of people are interested in this earth grid stuff, and no one really knows all the little details. They kind of you hear a lot of this channeled information, which is quite you know just makes it up really and doesn't really give you the you know, gist of what's actually going on with this, with this research. Mm. So that'll be out hopefully in October next year.